ever since I began this channel, the use of fabrication technology has played a big role in my creative process. First, it was laser cutting that completely changed how I approached scratch building. Later, it was 3D printing that made a revolution on how I build and think. So when Bambu Lab approached me, offering an A1 combo printer, I was more than excited. Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. First things first, Bambio Lab sent me this printer so I could use it to create a cool project and of course showcase all its features while doing it, where I'll share my honest opinions about this tool in the video. This also isn't an unboxing or a tool review channel, but I'll just say that right out of the box my impressions were very positive. The build quality was there and the attention to detail stood out. They even include a filament color swatch, so you can easily check all the available colors if you decide to stick with their in-house filaments. There's also a reno component kit with the printer that you can use for a first maker project and in my case it was a wireless mouse. I really wasn't expecting it so it was a great surprise. Now enough with the unboxing part of the video, I'll just say that the instructions were pretty clear and assembling the printer was much easier compared to my past experiences. It took me nearly 40 minutes to put it all together. I then booted the printer for the first time and it played a chime that made me smile. Then I connected to my Wi-Fi network and phone and from there it ran a bunch of tests and calibrations. All by itself, I just had to sit and wait. And this is pretty much how it goes with this printer. You don't have to set any probes or even understand what's going on. It just does its thing and in my case, I sit and marvel at the technology behind it. Now from there I of course went for the first print. I decided to go with this beautiful blue PLA from Bambio Lab. I stuck it on the AMS, which I'll go over in detail later on the video, and I was already thinking about slicers and print profiles and looking for the classic Benchy model, but I was happy to see that it was already there on the printer for a first test. The AMS detected the filament I just put on it. The printer played a second chime and started doing its thing. It started by doing a tool head cleaning process which I never saw before and makes total sense, then it leveled the bed. Some of these features can be turned on and off for each print job, this is what I understand, so you can speed up the process. But the printing is super fast as you can see, this is not sped up, I know it looks like it is, but this is real time. If you discount the calibration that can be and was activated for this print, this is a 14 minute benchy and the quality is spectacular, especially for a print this fast. Now, as you can imagine, from that I went on a printing spree and printed a bunch of stuff to see what it was capable of. Some multicolored models and useful things from the Handy app. And here's where I think Bambio Lab shines. They don't just sell you a good printer, they provide you an ecosystem with the printer, the app and the slicer. So right here I'm sending a print from the Handy app, which is not just a print management tool, but also kind of a social network where other creators share their models so you can print them. The genius thing is that all models are sliced and ready to go. And this is the first 3D printer I can comfortably recommend for an own maker friend. It feels like a finished product, an accessible, thought out experience. The AMS system manages the filaments, including on multicolored prints. If you decide to go with in-house filaments, it will automatically detect it and set the right parameters. We can also use whatever you have. To showcase this feature, I prepared the CDG keychain with three different colors, and as you can see, the AMS does everything, and the quality of the multicolored prints is truly impressive. There's no gap, no extra line, it's laser sharp. Okay. 
Okay, all of that is super cool, but this is not how I use 3D printing here on the channel. 3D printers here have three key functions. First of all, it is a Gribbly printer, meaning I use it to print multiple ready-to-use shapes that I can later incorporate in my builds. For that, the printer needs to be reliable, meaning maintaining a good quality on prints so I can set it and leave it working while I'm doing other things. On that front, this printer is of course amazing, it even compares well against some resin printed parts, which is crazy. Also, shout out to the bed adhesion, which is just perfect. It's also a custom part creation tool. I developed this technique in which I combine some random trash parts I collect to make my models. Most of the time, of course, these don't fit together. So I measure the pieces I have, I 3D model custom detailed parts to make the in-between, and then I join the parts. All subscribers are very familiar with this approach. For that, it is key to have a printer that is fast, so I don't lose a lot of time waiting for the job to be finished. The A1, as you just saw, can be very fast. And I've been using it to make custom parts for my current projects, like the Dragonfly. The third and to me most fun way I use 3D printing is making jigs and tools. It's using it to actually solve problems. Like having a 4 pound power drill not designed to delicate jobs that is also super taxing on my shoulders and neck. Now, fortunately, me being a functional hoarder like I am, I already had a bunch of useful hardware from past electronics teardowns to make a mini DC power drill, which I did around the measurements of the parts on Fusion 360. From there, of course, I just had to print everything on the A1. Having a reliable printer helps, as I only had to print the parts once, with a 0.1mm tolerance. That's a tenth of a millimeter. Crazy. As you can see, I designed some parts separated from each other, either to avoid using supports, or because I was thinking I could need to reprint them, which I didn't. But yeah, this is why you see me using some super glue to attach a couple of things. And right here you can see the ugliest soldering job ever. But where I could, I used some M3 bolts, making sure on the design process that I could take everything apart if ever needed. The trigger is the feature I was worried about the most, moving parts are always stressful, and it works first try, though I would probably avoid using end switches if I do a second version of this thing. A couple of bolts that catches some nuts on the other half of the handle comes last to close everything, and I just have to test it. The toughest plastic I work with here on the shop is acrylic, and it drills it pretty easy. It's just a bit slow, which is good for control, I guess. But the most important feature is, of course, the weight. And this mini DC power drill weights only 300 grams. Which, if you compare it to the battery alone from my older power drill, is almost half of it. I have a feeling I'll be using this DC power drill a lot in the shop, and I'm excited to end my work days without a sore neck and shoulders. Thanks Bambi Lab for sending me this amazing printer that I know I'll be using a lot here in the shop. Check the links below if you want a printer like this one, and as always, thank you for watching.